Good evening and welcome to the Late Night Business. My name is Ian Dennis and tonight I'm quite excited because we have an interesting conversation lined up. We're going to be addressing matters, strategy, how exactly as an entrepreneur can you develop and actually just relook look some of the strategies that we have and the guest that I have tonight is a strategy expert that I'll be introducing shortly. Also, before we get to start, I'd like to let you know that we are here at the Capital Club, the place you need to be as an entrepreneur, because at the Capital Club, everything happens here. At the Capital Club, you not only have a huge network of entrepreneurs in and around the country, but you also have access to resources in Kenya. And even if you're traveling, you have access to some of the facilities around the globe. Is it New York? Is it Dubai? We believe as an entrepreneur, all these things are actually meant for you. And at the Capital Club, it makes it happen. So tonight, I'm very excited because the guest I have with me tonight was one of my professors at the Strathmore University. He's actually one of the leading, uh, what's it called, strategy experts. He's an author too. He's developed, he has a book called Strategic Thinking, 10 Lessons from 100 strategy, strategic Plans. And we're going to be addressing some of this particular expert, some of these particular aspects. The guest is none other than Dr. Fred Ogola. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Ian. Thanks so much for coming to the show. Yes. I know mostly you usually do a lot of uh, political analysis, analysis these days, but I want guys to see another side of you, which is about strategy. Uh, but before you get to start of the show, what exactly are you most grateful for today? Well, first of all, we are very grateful for the life we have. And of course, uh, if you like in particular, of course, I'm grateful to my little girls growing up. And when I was leaving the house coming here, they <laughs> say, bye, daddy. Mm -hmm. There is no such an inspiring thing when they say, bye, daddy, and the one says, come back with the tamo. <laughs> so that sweet's coming back with it. I think that's very inspiring because they know that I have to, I'm going to work. Mm -hmm. They're seeing that daddy has to leave to work, then come back with something. I'm sure at the age of one and a half, one year, seven months, that's something you must be grateful for. Interesting. How old are they now? Uh, like, of course, my son is five years old. Then I have a daughter who is seven and uh, seven, one year seven months, then I have one, another daughter who is seven, eight months old. Interesting. So, You're uh, trailblazing, I'm following behind. Yeah, please, <laughs> as fast as you can. <laughs> it's part of my strategic plan. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Before I just get to start, I know, uh, I want to just go through your background before we get into the subject matter around strategy. I want to just go through your background. You grew up in abject poverty from what exactly I've read and from early, from the little I know about you. Just take us through your background and how exactly is your upbringing and how exactly did it inspire you to get to where you are right now? Three questions in one. Yeah, by the way, um, I grew up in Ogenya. I was born in Ogenya, in Sega Mission Hospital. Then we lived there for some time and actually we came to settle in Katukia. Ogenya is now in Abu Dhabi, almost to Busia. Yes. Ah, yes. Oh, you've mentioned Sega and I've just remembered Sega is yes, there exactly. Yes. Yeah, there's yeah. a hospital there. Uh -huh. Yes, my father was a catechist there. Mm -hmm. Oh, my your father, father is a catechist? Was a catechist. Was a catechist, catechist then yes. Again, he got a job as a catechist in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in Otiende, Langata. Mm -hmm. So he moved from there to Kibera. Mm -hmm. So we're living in Katwekera. So what I saw in these two places, which I call my foundation, was that we're in serious poverty, but I didn't see my father begging, even when he was a catechist, asking for money. He believed in waking up and working very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So he instilled in me that thing we call hard working. So in imagining Kibera, it can go either way. You can either become a border border, mm. you can become a manamba, you can do drugs, you can become a thief. Anything can go wrong. Mm. But uh, he instilled on me that you have to work hard and earn your living. So I think that's what inspired me. And uh, we, we, after that, again, this job got over. He had to go back to, again to Ugenya. And from Ugenya again, we picked the pieces up. And uh, it was difficult to pay school fees because we were 11 children. 11. So out of 11, uh -huh. my father which was, number are you playing? That's a football I team. I was number six. You're number six. Yes, Defensive actually, midfielder. Yes, yes. <laughs> because actually there's five in front and yeah. five behind. Behind, yes. so I was right in the middle. Uh -huh. Remember, there's something about being in the middle in the yes. family. Do you know what is wrong with it? What is it? You tend to be ignored. Ah. Oh. Because when they start counting from top, mm. you are number six. Yeah. When they begin from the beginning, mm -hmm. You are number six. Mm -hmm. They rarely begin in the middle. Yeah. So you are always somewhere far from mm -hmm. the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we <laughs> paying school fees, there was a chance that they would not start paying school fees for me. Uh, they were ensure that their people are sorted first. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember one thing that I used to. I usually, I usually remember and laugh. Yeah. When they are chasing chicken mm -hmm. for lunch, do you know what is your part? The leg and the <laughs> and the intestines. <laughs> Because everybody was assigned the part of a chicken. When yeah. your mother is now putting food on the table, uh -huh. 
You know, before my elder brother, elder sister, and the rest get the biggest yeah. part, uh -huh. for you now, what is remaining the intestine and the, and the leg. Mm. So that's what it is. It was to grow up in a family. That was on Christmas Day because yeah. chicken was eaten on Christmas only yeah. with the chapati. So I remember that was a difficult thing, but there was inspiration here. My mother did something outstanding because my father used to earn 1,500 per month. Per month. So he used to give my mother the, all of the money. So 1,500 per month? Yes. How our parents survived. Yeah, I, yeah? You, they, now you cannot even use that as fair. Yeah, I talk to my fellow in a cool or two. It cannot, <laughs> cannot be enough. Now people talk about cost of living. I think that that's the time we're supposed to actually go on strike and do mandamano. Yeah. But the thing, my mother used to take this 1,500 mm -hmm. and use it in businesses. Mm -hmm. She would buy some food, stuff, and resell them. Mm -hmm. And multiply this money. So she used to tell me, friend, that money will be 6,000 at the end of the month. Wow. And that's how we're able to survive on a few things. Mm -hmm. So I also developed the business acumen. That's why you can see I have a few businesses. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention them, but mm -hmm. I have a few businesses. Mm -hmm. I have a school in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. I have a hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, I run a consultancy company. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that it's a good thing to talk about the small businesses. Yes. How do you start a business? Mm -hmm. So I know how I began my first business. Mm -hmm. I will share about that. Yes. What was the strategy? But as a young boy, I had a, a sugarcane plantation. Mm -hmm. I had a sukuma wiki plantation. Then I so had what the, that's in Uganda. In Uganda. Yes, when I was actually around uh, nine, uh -huh. nine, eleven. That was the primary school. The um, uh, parental uh, a parental land. Land. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. I just had a sugar a sugarcane plantation, mm -hmm. a sukuma wiki plantation, and a small fish dam. Mm -hmm. So this fish pond every three months would harvest the fish give to my mother and my mother would sell mm. and give me part of it so i could buy for my things my own things mm. then uh, i had my my the the, the 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 wife to my uncle mm. was selling bananas in the in the school where we were studying mm -hmm. and selling sugarcane so i used to give her my sugarcane and bananas at home then she sells them in the school and give me some money mm. so that's how i managed to pay my let's say my class eight class seven then I was lucky to get a scholarship to St. Mary's Yala, so my school fees was fully paid for from there. Interesting. Uh, even pocket money was given, uniform was bought. I used to live like a son of a minister. Interesting. And then from yeah. there, yeah. I tell people that, uh, I, I, I know Ian even knew you are pursuing education. Mm. If you put your head into education, mm. you don't need to pay school fees, not even one bob. Mm. I never ever paid school fees. Until now, we are speaking here, um, I have five undergraduate degrees. Yes. I have two master degrees. Mm -hmm. I have 14 World Bank certifications. Mm -hmm. I have never paid any of the school fees. And one of the interesting things is that, why did you, yeah, because that's the thing about you. You have so many, I think five undergraduate, is it? Three masters and a PhD <laughs> and all this. Why would you want to, why pursue all this? What exactly was the, and how did you pursue all this? Well, what was I the mean, motivation? Well, I mean, even now I'm doing a law, in degree, uh, a law degree now just yeah. to, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find legal, uh, legal, uh, legal need for mm -hmm. my, my work. So the, the, the thing is actually is an unfortunate situation mm -hmm. why I have five undergraduate degrees. Mm -hmm. People think I, I have a diploma disease, no? Yeah. Um, I wanted to be a priest before. Mm -hmm. So as a priest, you have to do a degree in theology, yes. a degree in philosophy, and a degree in psychology. It's compulsory. So those are compulsory. So also as a priest, that. you have to have three degrees. Yes. No, uh -huh. yeah, you have to. Because you see, when you're interacting with people, you have to understand the philosophy mm -hmm. of the, the wisdom, wisdom to be a wise man. You mm -hmm. have to be a wise man. That's why True. all priests are wise. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, theology, you have to understand the study of God. Mm -hmm. And also psychology, because you're going to deal with people of different categories. You have True. to understand psychologically how do children grow. Mm -hmm. You have to understand psychology of women. No priest can actually cancel a family. Mm -hmm. People say, how can you cancel a, a family, a family you and a family. you're not married? No, yeah. they have studied the mm -hmm. women, not just women, but also men, but not just that, but also family psychology, mm -hmm. but also community psychology. Uh, that's why they are all able actually to give a very good advice, even if they're not married. Like for mm -hmm. example, priest can tell you, please never quarrel a woman. Mm -hmm. They know that there is no need of quarreling with women. Women don't thrive when they are being quarreled. Women thrive when they are being inspired. Mm -hmm. When you inspire a woman, they live in self fighting with you. Mm -hmm. That's why you see some men who are very peaceful. Mm -hmm. They have made their women become very successful so that this woman does not drive the energy towards you. Mm -hmm. If you make your woman able to become an MD, she's su suffering with balance sheet of a company. <laughs> so she has little time it's, even to fight you. It's strategic. But if you keep your woman home, she's yeah. waiting. When is he coming back? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Uh, what, what is what is he doing? <laughs> Where is he? You, the energy is towards you. So you, 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 woman must be engaged. Women are very intelligent, by mm. the way. 
much more than an average man, women are more intelligent. True, true. So for that matter, if you keep an intelligent mm. woman with her intelligence towards you, mm. you are in trouble, my mm. brother. They're evaluating every scorecard mm. of you, nothing is working, mm. you don't know how to dress, everything, mm. you will mm. be in trouble. Yeah. So I'm sure that's what helped me. But I also have to explain that my first business was in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's good to explain this because when I went to Mombasa, how did so I So that get was after priesthood? No, after... Before priesthood. So before, also that was after... I finished in, high school in 1999. Uh, uh -huh. You know, I was cushioned by the scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking that life is perfect. You have scholarship, you have pocket money, you have uniform, everything. Mm. Even shoes are being bought. Mm. So I was not sure, I was not seeing the poverty at home. Mm. Because actually I was blind to it. When I left high school, then I went home after finishing from four. I reached home and discovered that things are not easy because I even was giving out my uniform to people in school not knowing that at home I don't have what uh, to put on. Yeah. You have no shoe. I started walking barefoot. So I decided life was so hard. And I saw one day after three nights, me and my mother and my father and one of my brothers slept hungry mm. for two nights consecutively. Do you know what I did? Yeah. Mm. I jumped at the back of uh, this truck that came from, after taking fuel to Kampala, mm -hmm. they passed by a busy on the way yeah, to, yeah. to Mombasa. Yes. I jumped at the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. Then the truck brought us to Nairobi. Yeah. The next day, I jumped on the next truck to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I was sleeping in, a, in those corridors in Mombasa. Yeah. Yeah. Then from there, you can't sleep for long. I came up with the idea of the business and I set up a school and now, now from there... How did you go about it? Because you didn't have any shilling. Now, this is important. We are a capital club. Mm. Many businesses think the problem is capital, according to Ms. Nott. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Yeah. Actually, many businesses, if you sit with an entrepreneur and ask them, mm. their main problem is how to manage people mm. and processes. Those two P's are more important than capital. Because mm -hmm. without people, without processes, mm -hmm. no one can even put money on you. Yeah, there's that. Um, but people need to be paid. Yeah, but I'm saying, uh, uh, for sure, uh, for sure. Yes, yes. First of all, your yes. first business. Mm -hmm. If you start a business where you are the one who has competence, whom are you paying yourself? Mm -hmm. So you can even start by uh, paying yourself. Let me give an example. Which kind of business was most easy to be in a school? Mm -hmm. Why is school? Because I can teach. Mm -hmm. I needed just a classroom and chalk and the blackboard. Mm -hmm. And that is why we talk about partnership. Have you heard about something called strategic partnership? Yes, yes. You think about it big time when you are a media, standard mm -hmm. media group, it yeah. looks a big thing, it's yeah, a small yeah. thing. Well, yeah. I just found someone who was having what's called a madrasa in Mombasa, teaching these, uh, let's say, Islamic classes. Mm -hmm. And they're using the resources from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Yeah, yeah. And from there, it was lying idle. Mm -hmm. So I asked them, can I teach in this your classroom uh, between 2 p.m. and 8 you told me, take for free. Mm. And from there, I only wanted a chalk yeah. and myself and I begin a class. So what are you teaching? See, I began a school, nursery school. Ah. So actually, I just <laughs> got a, I begin this the school with 500 shillings as capital. Mm -hmm. The capital was for marketing. Yeah. I went to town because I'd known how to type, type setting, mm -hmm. because the Miss Ella, they taught us how to use computer in sure. 1999. Mm -hmm. I went to town, typed out a brochure, then I was posting them on, on behind of the that's a bit of a slum. Mm -hmm. A slum, that's why some people Which cannot Which slum were you then? <laughs> it's called Magongo Bukole. Uh -huh. He used to call it Maisha, Magongo, ma, ma, Musho Maisha, meaning mm -hmm. that after that even there's no matatu. Mm -hmm. Musho Matatu. Yeah. Which means that after each that stage, the musho. even there's no matatu that can enter. Life there is unbearable. Mm -hmm. So the bit of Islam is that there is no rules like, oh, you know, city council, this. Yeah. So even the school, you can begin around for two years without anyone even coming to inspect anything. And they were paying school fees. And they were paying school fees. Uh -huh. And the school fees, I was working there in my pocket. Mm. Because there was no bank. I was 17 and a half years old. I had no idea. I could not open bank account. Yeah. So the beauty of informal sector mm -hmm. can actually help some business thrive. Mm. When people are telling us we need to take away all the slums, for me, I feel... Yeah that slum have some function in this mm. society. Mm -hmm. Without a slum, I would have never survived. Mm. If you threw me to New York mm. and told him to begin a school, could not I could have never ever begun a school. But in Magogo Bokole, it was possible because one reason is that people agree on informalities. Yeah. Even school fees, there's nothing like invoice. Yeah, you're there's nothing like school fee structure. Mm. <laughs> there's a say that Malimu. Uh, uh, so can I bring on Friday? Yes, bring on Friday. <laughs> then they bring you the money you take. Then you write something on a piece of paper. Yeah, I mean they don't it. ask for receipt. Yeah. So the informality mm -hmm. itself is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And here now that you're a business expert, mm -hmm. 
Do you know that regulation kills businesses? Mm -hmm. And now why are Kenyans crying when Ruto comes the Finance Act? Mm -hmm. Because he's formalizing the what was informal. Mm -hmm. And that is the pain. So enjoy the informality before formality True. comes because True. that's how we manage to survive. So with 500 shillings, mm -hmm. I just had to uh, uh, type them and print mm -hmm. and then photocopy a uh, hundred posters, mm -hmm. put them in uh, people's houses, mm -hmm. wait for 10 days, people came and pay school fees, mm -hmm. and then off to go. And you know, the issue which you need to know is what is about pricing. Mm -hmm. Because how do you price school fees? You have not in Mombasa, yeah, yeah. you have not done any business, you are just a form for lever mm -hmm. or dropout if you like. So I just went to a nearby school mm -hmm. called Bombo Primary, yeah. and I found out that uh, in Bombo Primary it was a public school. Mm -hmm. In this public school, mm -hmm. before you come in, the teacher, the head teacher wanted you to give him two and five thousand, two mm -hmm. two thousand shares. Yeah. This was not receipted. Uh, this, this was is, giving. Yeah, yeah. But you see, school fees you pay separately, which was nine hundred shillings. Mm -hmm. So I discovered that in that was the only school around. Mm -hmm. If for you to enter, you must pay two two thousand. Mm -hmm. I gave what's called admission fee. So for me, it was admission fee. Mm -hmm. You pay 2000 mm -hmm. to be admitted. Mm -hmm. Then you pay 900 for school fees in the town. Mm -hmm. Imagine after those 10 days when I did the announcement, uh, 25 children came and paid admission fee. Mm -hmm. That much, day I never slept in the corridor. And how much are you charging for school fees? 900 shillings. So 900 shillings? A, a, a term. Wow. Yes. That's a term is three months. Yes, it's three months, yes. Interesting. It's sustainable because. I'm literally paying nothing. I have no rent to pay. And they're the gate I'm still. the one teaching. So, yeah. so long as I'm in class, we are earning money. Interesting. Then I got my sister was also teaching another school in, uh, in uh, uh, Patrice. Mm -hmm. She was not being a teller. My sister, come, we teach together. So yeah, employed that her. school now yeah. has 1,320 something pupils. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes the second best school in oh, Mombasa. Interesting. With the capital of 500 shillings. Mm -hmm. What was important was to get the teachers mm. and get the value proposition. Mm. What's wow. value proposition? Mm. Yeah. A value proposition is to address the unmet need. Mm -hmm. What was the unmet need? In Mombasa, when you went, all schools, children were speaking in Swahili to their parents in school, on the road, mm. in church. So we came up with a school where you must speak English. So imagine, Ian, if the school in Mombasa, in Bokole, Magongo, in Islam, and a child can say, Good night, Daddy. Why? I love you, Daddy. These ones who are, let's <laughs> say, <laughs> yes, jaw-dropping, jaw-dropping <laughs> moments for parents. So any child that yeah. was in a, in, a, in a certain house, yeah. when this brother child says, good, good night, night, Mommy, uh, and then by, when the children are going to school, we tell them we have to say bye to Mommy. Bye-bye, hmm. Mommy. Yeah. See you later, Mommy. Hmm. Not even that English you are speaking a whole sentence, hmm. just those ones. Hmm. Another parent watching her, a child saying, good night, mommy. Yeah. Tomorrow, that is my admission. Interesting. And the school expanded leaps and bounds. Of course, later, mm. I was able to buy a plot, mm. buy a building, mm. build a proper school mm. with, a, with all the facilities required, mm -hmm. and register the school and the story for now. Interesting. And there's something that you've mentioned there, whereby you started off from zero, whereby you're sleeping in the street, you saw this particular idea, you exploited it. And that's why most entrepreneurs are. But the biggest challenge is now that exponential growth. Yeah. Uh, whereby you had 25 children, now you have 1,000. What are some of the strategies when you look back that you did that to are right, that enabled you to get to where you are, that most entrepreneurs don't do it? Because I know most entrepreneurs, you start small and you remain in the small mindset and still maintain there. What did you do right? What are some of the strategies you put into place to enable you to get there? Yeah, you see, Ian, I, I, I think that he is even in this book here, mm -hmm. Most entrepreneurs begin the business prepared for failure, mm. but not prepared for success. True. That's why when they succeed in the first step, they remain there. Ah, you're, you're surprised. <laughs> yeah, you see, however, remembered where you grew up, I don't know where you grew up, but there mm. must have been a mama mboga mm. who was selling vegetables, True. onions, and tomatoes. And you go back 10 years later, yeah. they're just still selling onions, I, I vegetables. Know them, yes. Isn't it? Yes. When they began, they said, if I fail, mm. I look for another job. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know if they succeed, what they'll do. Mm -hmm. So that mentality is the mentality. World-class wealth begins with world-class thinking. Mm -hmm. That's it. So when you're thinking small, like for me, when I began, it was about survival. Mm -hmm. It was like I'm on the street. I'm sleeping on the street. I can't sleep here for long. Mm -hmm. I can't call my mother. There was mm -hmm. no mobile phone. Mm -hmm. She does not even know whether I've eaten or not. Yeah. 
So this we call entrepreneurship out of necessity. Mm -hmm. So that's a stage where you have necessity to become what? Mm -hmm. An entrepreneur. Yeah. Just like some people, you get fired at your place of work, then you begin a small business. Mm -hmm. Then before you realize now, it's you have already been able to take care of your needs. Now the issue is why, what next? Mm -hmm. So uh, let me just explain that stages in business. Mm -hmm. There's a stage of business where you are just trying to uh, sell to everybody, sell to the financials, sell to your customers, sell to your all stakeholders so that you get accepted, then the mm -hmm. business will become a little bit stable. Mm -hmm. Then after the business comes stable where you can break even, you start realizing that this is not the stage to stay for longer. Mm -hmm. And this are step which is critical because sometimes there are even couples where the husband does not believe that the wife can start a business. Mm -hmm. And then later, when she sees that now, you are not asking him for more money, money to yeah. pump to the business, mm -hmm. they start believing in you. So mm -hmm. that's it's called a sales stage. Mm -hmm. It's called sales stage. stage. Yeah. The second stage after a break even called the craftsmanship stage, whereby mm -hmm. now you are receiving more revenue than invoices, mm -hmm. which means that uh, you are having a positive sum game, mm -hmm. isn't it? Now, where do you go here? This stage called crafting. Crafting mm -hmm. here means that the business will outgrow you. Mm -hmm. Because now, as I said, I being as one teacher, yeah. you cannot teach, you are yeah. seeing parents in the office, True, you, can do you are in class one, class two, nursery, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. have to find a way on which you structure the business. Mm -hmm. Where now the processes, mm -hmm. systems, yeah. structures mm -hmm. have to come and play. So that's when you have to have somebody head of finance, for mm -hmm. example, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But also you have to manage them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You have to monitor them, yeah. head of operations. Interesting. Let me, for example, you begin a small restaurant. Yeah. And you begin a restaurant and you're the one Let me, I'll pause you there so that you can take a small commercial break. So you're in the, so, you're in the second part, craftsmanship. So after the break, you're going to craft this particular conversation further. Yes. So I'll see you after the break. Thank you. So welcome back to the show. Before you enter the break, you're just talking about some of the stages in which you go through as you're building a business and you're on the second stage. So the first stage is the, it's called sales stage. Yes. So in this stage, most people get stuck here. Mm -hmm. Actually, statistics show that 85% of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. remain at the sales stage. True. These people make a lot of money, mm -hmm. but they have no business. Yeah, yeah. You know, you are the business and you are the money. Mm -hmm. So you have no one who can even, no one can even help such a business, no one even understand your business. Mm. People just know you're making money. Mm. However, see the family member, the father leaves, he comes back with money and food. Yeah. You have no idea what he does. You, don't, you, don't, you have never seen his employee. Mm. There is no auditor. Mm. There is no uh, operations manager. There is no marketer. He's the market. Yeah, he's, he's the everything. money. He's everything. Yeah, yeah. That stage, many people navigate beyond it. It's mm. also a very sweet stage mm. because actually you're having more revenue than bills. True. Then now you move to the craftsman stage where you now start to build a business, mm -hmm. where you have departments, you have uh, people responsible for different functions. Mm -hmm. This is a very critical stage. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Because if you don't have the right people in that stage, they can actually kill your business. Mm -hmm. Imagine you brought a wrong finance person. Yeah, comes and steals Imagine everything. you brought somebody who doesn't know how to do customer relationship management. True. So this is the time when entrepreneur needs to be very careful mm -hmm. with people. So I told you now the issue is not about capital. Mm -hmm. Money is flowing. Yeah, yeah. Money is flowing. As a building but a team. you do not know how to set up a team mm -hmm. capable of running the business. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can get the right people, but you can't let go. At the same time, it's very risky to let go. You don't know when. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes you can let go too early yeah. or you're holding on too long. Too, yeah. And there's no formula around it. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is to do here is that when you now need to have a very clear strategy with proper structures, mm -hmm. systems, and processes. Mm -hmm. But at this time, I can advise entrepreneurs as well as such listening to me, you need to talk to somebody to mentor you at this stage. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't get right this stage, you are actually in trouble. True. So after you manage to manage these steps, set stage number one and finish and become a craftsmanship, mm -hmm. Now you can start to what's called managing by walking around. You can mm -hmm. manage by walking. You can ask somebody, can I get a marketing report? Mm -hmm. Can I get the financial report? Mm -hmm. Before you are the financial report, mm -hmm. you are the marketing report, you are the mm -hmm. customer report, you are the all the reports, all the reports that we do. You see I had them, someone say them. managing, but it's called Umbua. Yes, Umbua, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can Managing by walking around. Yes, managing by walking around. Yes. You can even now set objectives mm -hmm. and say now you can do this and that. After this stage mm -hmm. of craftsmanship, now you're moving to a stage which is now called stability. Mm -hmm. Stability is whereby the stability is not about cash flow anymore. Mm -hmm. 
uh, stability is where you can actually even take a day off. Mm. Because stage one, stage you like, you have, have you ever been on a treadmill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A treadmill? Yes. Uh, I've seen people trying to do something else while they're on a treadmill. You'll fall down. Yeah, you'll fall down. Yes. So stage one and two, you are literally on a treadmill. Mm. A treadmill. So you must go according to the pace of the treadmill. Yeah. If you miss step, you're out. True. But stage two now, you go to stability whereby you have departments who mm. can actually be able to generate for you data, mm. system, they can cover with Crops their own plans and the rest. Yeah. So then, from that stage of stability, which is the third stage, move to stage of visionary. Mm -hmm. That is now the fourth stage, where mm. now you can come and tell them your values, mm. you can tell them what your vision, your mm. aspirations. Mm -hmm. Then they convert them into objectives. Mm. You understand? Mm. Before you are the ones giving them the objective, mm. then they execute mm. at stability. Stage number three, mm. now you have gone to the issue of stability. Mm -hmm. And the stage number four is you send them your vision and your aspirations, mm -hmm. mission, and values. Then they convert those things now into, into objectives. objectives. Yeah. Then now they go into actual activities. Mm -hmm. Then they give you reports. Interesting. Then the last stage, now you have to to a stage where you are a MIP. Mm where they can see you after three months mm. and things are okay you can take a leave mm -hmm. you hear me have gone for a trip in new york you're yeah. a business owner what's happened the business is running yeah, yeah. and that's why i am now with processes. my business now mm. the mm. hospital mm -hmm. uh, on wednesday i'm sharing a board mm. uh, and um, the manager is coming to meet me hotel in hilton hotel yeah we chair the board i chair the board meeting mm -hmm. and i come back i don't go to the hospital mm. i'll be ceo i'll be team i'll be structure oh, so everything has been i said. get all the reports i'm a myth Interesting. In fact, Ian, yeah. when I go to my company, one day I'll go with you, mm. you'll find when I reach there, they'll ask me, whom do you want to see? Mm. Then I say, I want to see you. They tell me that, do you have an appointment? I mm. say, uh, yes. Okay, wait there, I'll go ask the CEO. Then mm. I wait in the reception there, mm. just like anybody else. Yeah, because you're then the myth. They, yes, because <laughs> I'm a myth. Interesting. Then they come and call the myth. Yeah. Then they see, I told the CEO, please never tell them, uh, no, director, no, no, just treat me like any other uh, uh, guest. Interesting. Then I walk, then when I go to the office, now I'm the chairman saying, yes, how is yes. the business doing? Interesting. Tell me what's, what's the vision. Yeah. Uh -huh. So now I'm commanding inside the office. Yeah. When I leave the office, I leave like a myth again. I walk and fizzle away. That's interesting. So it's so for you just waiting for yeah, the money, that, uh, money to check stages. in and you're yes. observing the but business. But let's, let's just let yeah. this, just yeah. forget yeah. about me yeah. a little bit. Yes. You go to the Degwa's family, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Ndegwa used to NCBA. own N uh, yes, N uh, NIC. Uh, yes, yeah. N uh, the time I met him, seated uh, in, uh, in, 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 in in looking to see a teller, mm -hmm. seated to be served like any other person. And I was almost even going ahead and don't know, yeah, you can just uh, all of a sudden say, mm -hmm. So it's about us respecting something. Those are the stages that make you really happy. Mm -hmm. That time you have built a business mm -hmm. because some people can make money. But making money can kill your business if you don't set up processes, yeah, systems, systems, and structures. True. At the same time, you're looking for succession. Mm -hmm. My son now can inherit my business. Mm -hmm. I can go with him one day when I'm going to share the board. I tell him, sit there and see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Which questions am I asking? Mm -hmm. Which reports am I getting? Mm -hmm. He can run that business. But if I give him a chaotic business where he does not know where the finances come from, mm -hmm. where the reports are coming from, he will tell me, as soon as you die, mm -hmm. I sell the company because I suspect this what has killed you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's how succession becomes very hard. Interesting. Uh, one of the interesting things that I like uh, about the book Strategic think Thinking is that you've done over a thousand business plans. First, uh, what's it called? Strategic plans. Yes. So when someone hears that you've done a, strat a thousand strategic plans, someone thinks that you've consulted for over a thousand companies. Maybe just break it down to us. What exactly is it that you mean when you mention that you've done a thousand strategic plans? And maybe just share with us maybe one or two highlights from the plan strategic plans that you've actually done. Uh, by the way, um, Ian, you may not believe it, but I've done two, 1,329 companies. Mm -hmm. The last one, <coughs> the last one I did at... Um, Zanzibar last week, mm -hmm. I was doing the strategy plan for CNDB Bank. Mm -hmm. Oh, know, CNDB, the big bank. CNDB bank, yes. Yeah, yeah, the one in this Tanzania. Yes. Now, just talk about the, the HR director of CNDB Bank. Mm -hmm. I met him when I was a very young consultant in 2012, mm -hmm. when he was the HR director for Helios Towers. Mm -hmm. I did that strategy. Mm -hmm. He moved from there to Tigo. Tigo, yes. I did the strategy for Tigo. Mm -hmm. From Tigo, he moved to ND, NMB Bank. Mm -hmm which is now the largest bank by profit. Mm. CRDB bank is largest by asset base. True. So then he moved from NMB bank to CRDB, mm. and I did. Mm. Now this is just one person. Mm. So assuming I have 20 people like that, <coughs> where for one person moving to five companies, I do the strategic plan. Mm. How much more community? It's exponential. So um, 
I, I tell people that's why I'm passionate about strategy planning. So it works. And then there's also a cycle. Mm. After you do this one, as you're doing others discover this one now is due for review. Mm. Then if you did a good job, they call you mm. and you continue doing them. So in spite of the fact that people hear me making political commentaries, they seem to live and assume they go in strategy. Mm. Because political commentaries I'm making because this is the only way to serve my nation. Mm. Mm. For example, you can sit in class doing formulating strategies which will be eroded by political environment. True. So you have to fight from both fronts. So I believe that uh, it's been it's exciting and I've done 1,000 now, 300, because this book was published June last year, mm. 1,329. Now, let me just share with you one of the most interesting lessons there. Mm -hmm. If you ask me one other read and read and read and read again, mm. it's called Mismanagement of Mismanagement. Mm -hmm. It's on page 83. I didn't know where it begins. Mm -hmm. Because it cuts across Every organization, when I mean organization, I don't mean companies, mm -hmm. even a family. Mm -hmm. We mismanage many things and we start mismanaging the mismanaging. What is the lesson here? Mm -hmm. The lesson here is that as a business executive, you can make a wrong decision. And then instead of accepting it, you try to make another bad decision, trying to right this wrong, and then actually you are wronging the wrong and mm -hmm. it continues. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about this book is that we give you cases. For example, there's a case here about a CEO, uh, about a board mm -hmm. that had the wrong CEO. And the CEO was totally the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's an interesting thing because the companies... When you, I think that's always something that always comes up. How do you know a CEO is wrong? Well, Because most organizations probably has They CEOs. had a CEO <laughs> who was addicted to strip, strip mm -hmm. clubs. Mm -hmm. So he had an office as big as the capital club. Mm -hmm. But he was going to a strip club which is as small as this... But surely, no, maybe there are so many economy. CEOs who are seated in some seats. And you <laughs> no, I'm saying, that's the time. I'm saying it was an yeah. thing. Uh -huh. He was spending his time in a street club instead of in the office. Mm -hmm. So he was he's, he's a short, uh -huh. an insurance company. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to sign something. You're supposed to have meetings with people to sign deals. Yeah, yeah. You are in the street club. Uh -huh. You are not accessible. Uh -huh. Revenues so were going conduct. down. Yeah, yeah. He, did, he had no discipline at all about his company. Mm -hmm. So he was the wrong CEO. Mm -hmm. Now, after knowing that that was the issue, mm -hmm. What could you have done here? First of all, fire the CEO. Well, okay. The other question is, mm. the CEO was earning 10 million shillings mm. a month mm. and it was in a five years contract. Mm. Do you want to know how much you have to pay? Of course, there will be damage. So that is cost 10 million yeah. times 12, 12. 120 million times 5. 600 million. Are you willing to pay that? If, but in the long term, yeah, for me, I would. So the thing is, this, the board decided to say, let's train the CEO. Mm. Training, eh? Mm -hmm. Can you train someone out of a strip club? No, which, is the, which is the manual? Uh, can you give me the curriculum? You cannot change someone's So behavior. they took him to Harvard. Yeah, yeah. Now, as he goes to Harvard, yeah. he's not working, isn't it? Uh -huh. But he's being paid for a flight to Harvard. Mm -hmm. Accommodation in Harvard. That's a local company. It's a local company in Kenya. Uh -huh. Actually, it's in the book. Uh -huh. Is the book here? Is a case in this yeah, book? Yeah, and I want you to say it. <laughs> yes. It's called Apollo. Uh -huh. Apollo. Uh -huh. Insurance. Apollo, I know it, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Actually, I, I did for them a strategy and they allowed me to write this case and mm -hmm. even write those things, that, that mm -hmm. book. Yeah. So, the guy was second to Harvard training, mm -hmm. came back for three months, mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. Then, the worst of it, the guy was second to Fontainebleau in France. Mm -hmm. Another three weeks, yeah. nothing changed. Mm -hmm. Then they took him to the worst place of ever mm -hmm. called Budapest. Mm -hmm. No, I've been to Budapest. When mm -hmm. you're in Budapest, when you look front, mm -hmm. back, mm -hmm. left and right, do you know what you're likely to see? Strips. In the traffic light, they yeah. advertise strip clubs live, mm -hmm. telling you today mm -hmm. we shall be here. Mm -hmm. And you take him that recover. Mm -hmm. After he came back with all even more sites, more contacts of yeah. these places, <laughs> now he could not even be seen in the office. Eventually they fired him, paid him back the package, yeah. but before doing that, wasted 30 million. Wow. Which means that you are mismanaging mismanagement. Mm. But let's not go far to the CEO, uh, Ian. You see young people, maybe some of them are listening to me. Mm. You, get, you fall in love with a lady, isn't it? Mm. You discover she's cheating on you. Mm. Huh? But you have been bought for her a car. Then mm. you say, now, I bought a car. I can't leave her. But the so you know what's happening? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. No, no, no. So for another day. <laughs> so you have what's called escalated commitment. Yeah. You don't want to leave. Oh. But yet the relationship is abusive. Mm. Even women. 
You marry the wrong man or oh, you're yeah. dating the wrong man. He'll change, I'll pray and for you. And you say, him. you know, this man will change. Yeah. Then you go to join women's choir. You start uh, praying <laughs> shakahola. You're nothing. <laughs> this is a bad decision. Yes. You, you as an executive, mm. you enter in a, a wrong product portfolio. Mm. You start selling the wrong product. Change. Then after that, you start blowing more marketing revenue. Oh. You add more Negative. team in it. Mm. You ask for more time. You done. enter in Uganda. That's the wrong business. Mm. Not supposed to go to Uganda. Mm. Then, for example, Safaricom has gone to Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it's not a great move, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. But they are going to push decision. it. Yeah, yeah. The CEO will be traveling there every day to manage crisis board meetings. Mm -hmm. It's up to him. He'll mm -hmm. spend more time in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. The portfolio from Ethiopia will be insignificant. Mm -hmm. He better accept what happened to James, uh, James Mangi. Mm -hmm. James Mangi, if you meet, he'll tell you the worst mistake he made as CEO was to go to Uganda. Mm -hmm. And that was a bad business, mm -hmm. isn't it? He's got right in DRC. Mm -hmm. KCB has followed him in DRC. I've seen so many Kenyans bank trying to go to DRC. I've seen Tanzanian bank. Not everybody will succeed See, in DRC. True. But they'll blow a lot of resources to try to succeed. Mm. So mismanage or mismanagement is that thing. You go to a house now, for example, on Friday, mm. you come home late around midnight. You have to ask you, Ian, where are you coming from? Mm. Then you tell her, who are you to ask me yeah. where I'm coming from? Mm. Is that the right answer? No. You don't want to know that you mismanage your time. Mm. You didn't even tell her before I'll come late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not informing her before time is a mistake. Right. Then mismanaging your time to come too late is a mistake. Mm. Being asked and being rude is a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Then you bang the table is a mistake. Yeah. Then you push her is a mistake. Yeah. Before you realize you're in a cell of having beaten your wife. True. And the mistake was just one mistake. Mismanagement. You're just supposed to say, sweetheart. Mm. I'm sorry I'm late. Mm -hmm. From there, can you imagine how safe you are? You'll be sleeping on your bed. Yeah. But here you're sleeping on a floor mm -hmm. in a urine because you couldn't just agree that you're late. Interesting. So this mismanagement or mismanagement is perverse. Mm -hmm. You find a young man, young woman has chosen one career. You are not meant to be a teacher. True. You're you performing change. poorly in class. Yeah, you can change. It's true. And it's in everywhere. So in every company I've ever consulted, mm -hmm. I've seen mismanagement of mismanagement. mismanagement interesting so that's one of the lessons about it and i think also another thing that i also wanted to know is that because you know we're in a point where by most companies especially you're coming from a season of corona in kenya of course mandamano and how exactly our political situation is so what's the right strategy for any kenyan company probably watching this being in an environment that's so volatile yeah you know there's somebody who came with the book hmm? Vol uh, volatility hmm? isn't it hmm? Um, and uh, this VUCA environment is, uh, is uncertain as well, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Because you're in a cycle of every five years, politics. Yes, and uh, yeah. politics is perverse. Now, mm. you see, for example, I I there's no one size fits all. Mm. For example, those who are doing consultants like me, mm. we are in an environment whereby now they are talking about shareholders versus mm. non-shareholders, mm. and of course, Raila, Uru, mm. and the rest. I think that uh, Kenyan businesses, uh, men and women, really have to uh, be very um, read this environment mm -hmm. very clearly mm -hmm. there are certain things that will not change mm -hmm. there are some industries where whether there is mandamano or not mm -hmm. everybody will eat mm -hmm. isn't it so hospitality industry food those are industries that don't go wrong mm -hmm. during covid we saw it mm -hmm. they made money in spite of covid it, it depends no no yeah. people who are, yeah. I, I don't mean hotels mm -hmm. People who are making food, oh, all right. the food consumption goes up, it never goes down. Mm. So I'm trying to say there are industries you can select and say it. Education. Mm. Can you study. imagine, I was having my son at home, you have to buy a laptop, they are online. And you're mm. paying school fees, and actually you're the one now to turn on the computer and mm. being watched. Showing but you're, still, you're paying, the school fees was never reduced even during COVID. Mm. Uh, universal difference. So sometimes there are sectors, for example, in my school. For me, COVID was a good blessing because in the area where I was working, my school in Mombasa, mm. I was not renting the building. Most of my competitors were renting the building. Mm. So when they were not paying rent, the owners came and closed their schools. Mm. So when the schools opened suddenly, they had no way to begin. Mm. So those people ran to my school mm. and I received a windfall. Interesting. And that's why I moved from 600 to 1,300 and something. Mm -hmm. So there are always those things that you have to trade on. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, there are some businesses that has what is called the high level exposure. Mm -hmm. For example, um, uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. 
they have a lot of, for example, exposure rates, mm -hmm. for example, buildings can burn, yeah, all yeah. those things. Mm -hmm. So uh, be cautious. That's why, you know, the banking sector, the banks never make money whether anything. They mm -hmm. never lose money. Yeah. During, uh, even during the, the, the post-election violence, see, things were banned. Yeah, yeah. Their things were insured. Mm -hmm. They will never give you loan if you are not insured. insured. You are. So there must be a way on which you have to increase our insurance. Mm -hmm. So companies who are running, for example, you are dealing in a consumable goods, products, and the rest. Maybe commodities need to do a lot of insurance because, you know what? Mm -hmm. You have invested a billion shillings mm -hmm. in a business. Mm -hmm. And premiums, if you like it, could be even 0.2% or maybe 2 3%, isn't mm -hmm. it? The risk you expose yourself by not insuring those businesses at the expense of looking at high margins, mm -hmm. that risk is too much. You mm -hmm. need to insure some things. Mm -hmm. So that in case of fire, in case of this um, and the man on the rest, it works. The only thing you can ensure for now is revenue. Mm. Because you can ensure revenue. But of course, there are many things you can look for ways to digitize mm -hmm. your businesses. Mm -hmm. Business needs to go more digitization. Mm -hmm. How can you be consumed digitally? Mm -hmm. Safaricom is in your bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Safaricom is your sitting room. True. Is in your car. Mm. In traffic, Safaricom is you. True. I'm sure the only the way place Safaricom won't go with you is in heaven. When you go to heaven, you go alone. <laughs> but Safaricom will escort you up to your grave. Mm. Even people still, when you are going down, people are still taking photos and uploading them on, on yeah. TikTok. True. So Safaricom is everywhere. So try to be more everywhere. But that presence must be digitized. Interesting. And then just a final question before for quick fire, and just maybe you can just uh, answer it just uh, in brief. There's something that you'd actually, I think, I was just reading around, that you'd mention that as any particular entrepreneur, as an individual, you need like seven sources of income, seven sources of uh, streams of income. Mm -hmm. And you'd mentioned before you left your professor job, uh, what's it called? You only just tied to one, but it was an opening for you now to open the different se seven sources of stream, uh, seven streams of income. Mm -hmm. How can anybody watching this probably just maybe having one or having none? How can one speed up this particular process of having the seven? And why seven? Well, if you're having none, of really that's a big problem because mm -hmm. actually you shouldn't have none. Mm -hmm. Because there's always maybe you had a job and you're fired, or maybe you're in a job and you're not paid. The, it the, at this time, it's so risky to be in mm -hmm. a job without anything you have on the side. Mm -hmm. Let me just talk about my firing. Eh? Mm -hmm. I was fired, mm -hmm. and, and I can make it in brief. And I simply yeah. mm -hmm. took my things, put in my car, and mm -hmm. drove to another office. Mm -hmm. But you see what's happening in your places, you can see whether you are thriving mm -hmm. or there are some internal politics which are hunting yeah, you. Yeah, you can know. At the first warning sign, mm. do something. Mm. And uh, Ian, I've always told you that uh, I like crisis. Mm. I like crisis because crisis has made me. Who I am today is because I've got crisis. Mm. So anybody listening to me, if you don't have crisis in your life, go to church today, kneel mm. down and ask God, mm -hmm. God give me some challenge. Mm. Because the fact that God has given mm. you a challenge means God trusts you. It's true. When you see your friend not having a challenge, you know God does not trust them because they cannot <laughs> handle anything. For me, God trusts me, I can handle challenges, true. so he gives me. So the firing is a challenge. Mm. God tells you, friend, my son, you've been here for long enough. I've given you enough preparation and mentorship. Yeah. Now you can fly. Mm. So even you listening to me now, let me tell you what. If you have any crisis about income, mm. that crisis has not come because you need to die. True. Remember that before diamond or platinum can be put on your neck. Mm. Do you know the amount of pressure they have to handle? High pressure. 700,000 uh, Fahrenheit of heat mm. that they have to incur for them to become a diamond. For you, you want to become a diamond mm. at no pressure. Mm -hmm. It cannot be, you must have pressure. Yeah. So what are these ways? Why do you start looking? Mm. Let me tell you what, don't look far. Mm. The first place to look for opportunity is what are your problems that are not being solved? Mm. And therefore, the solution to that problem is your business. Mm. And before I get to end, I have all these like 10, 10 questions for just quick fire questions that I have for you. Yeah. So just anything that comes to your mind. Mm. So the first question I'd like to ask, what's the greatest risk you've ever taken? The greatest risk I've ever taken was to fly to Barcelona mm -hmm. when I was going to do my PhD, when I had no language in Spanish mm -hmm. and I had no house uh, secured for rent. But I promised everybody at home that all was okay and I was safe over there. But I didn't even know what is yes or no in Spanish. Wow, interesting. 
I wanted to say something else, but anyway, we'll, we'll have another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say marrying the cousin of your wife, but anyway. <laughs> what I mean, what I mean. That was not risky, that was not risky. <laughs> we'll have it, we'll have another conversation. Yes, yes. What's your favorite month? What's my favorite month? I think, uh, let me just put it uh, clear that it's July. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite word? The favorite word? Mm -hmm. Can. Because mm -hmm. I have a can mentality. Mm -hmm. Can mentality. I can. Mm -hmm. The can mentality is me. Interesting. What would you say is your favorite age? I think uh, 75 looks good. Mm -hmm. Actually, I actually say after 75, mm -hmm. if God wants anything, let him do. Interesting. Yeah. Describe your style in one word. Uh, my style. Mm -hmm. Elegant. Uh, what is your hidden talent? I'm an analyst. Mm -hmm. Salt or sweetie? I think I'll go salt. Money or happiness? Uh, of course happiness, my brother. Uh, yes, yes, in this world, try to make yourself rich mm -hmm. because um, happiness uh, does not come with age. It comes with wealth. Mm -hmm. So the more wealth you have, mm -hmm. the more likely you'll be happy. I've never seen a, a very happy man saying they are very, they are very happy. <laughs> and just a final question, what scares you the most? What scares me the most? Uh, what scares me the most is uh, in case mm. I die and found out that there is no heaven, I'll be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but you would have been a priest. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> but you see, heaven is just is a, a, a conjecture. But yeah. I'm living knowing that heaven is there. In the heaven is here. And if you, I mean, uh, that's a story another day. I mean, yeah, no, but that's a, we'll, we'll, I think you need the to heaven I'm talking too. about is the where we shall see God because really I'm preparing for this. That yeah. If I don't get it, it will yeah. be so sad because Africans are spending too much time, time in the yeah, church. In church. And if there's no God, Africa will be the most disappointed continent <laughs> in the world. Unfortunately. <laughs> and on that particular note, we come to the end of the show. It's been quite a pleasure having this particular conversation. You can Thank get you. the book, Strategic Thinking on Nuria. And I think also you can get Fred Dagola across all different particular social media platforms. I think we need to do this another time. And I think we'll just have extend this particular conversation on strategic thinking. Thank you so much to the Capital Club, the place you need to be for any particular entrepreneur. One of the interesting thing about the uh, Capital Club is that once you have, you're part of the Capital Club, you have access to so many different particular amenities, not only the spa, the gym, the meeting rooms, restaurants. Every Thursday, there's always a band coming to place. It's a very nice time to come and network and be part of this particular community. My name is Ian Dennis. This has been the Late Night Business. Until next time, I'll see you right here.